poem in 200. Um, it's uh, been published by Michael Rose at the kind of disconcerting moments, such as earlier this evening when uh, he basically gave him a just really wanted to hear the poets reading their poems. So, um, <laughs> 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 uh, so, so, so this is a rare opportunity to do so. There he is, fixed the drawing room. <laughs> Well, this poem is in, um, at the end of the year 2000. Um, it's called Beyond in England, and it has two themes which I hope interweave. The first of them, you could say, is sort of wondering at, at sacrifice, how someone becomes, manages to become so indifferent to, to this life and to their bodily existence as to be able to, to renounce it. Unwilling. And the second theme is about stories and, and history, the nature of truth, the nature of how things are altered in, in, their, in their telling. And the two things do overlap to some extent because, because stories about, I suppose you must call them martyrs, um, do vary enormously. So that's a part of the problem. It centers upon a figure who I didn't know about it, but many, many of you probably did. Um, Maximilian or Maximiliano, as he is here, Colbe, a Franciscan, Polish Franciscan priest who died and was killed at, at Auschwitz. I heard him um, once in a small town in central Italy when I noticed a plaque high on the wall, a rather, um, rather scruffy plaque as it is now. Um, which said that um, said that he lived there in uh, for the summer of 1918, um, and so I was fascinated by by this detail. And eventually, I came to look him up and in, in finding something out about it is where this matter of um, different stories and different versions really comes from. So, let's say this one long poem. Um, Four waters, four arms, come in at about eight minutes and thirty eight. <laughs> <laughs> I hear of other modes of high indifference. Can I imagine this? I walk up to my enemy, I slice off my nose, it lies at his feet. I slice off my left hand, it drops to the ground. Is there blood in the dust? Is there pain? If so, it is felt. Who feels it? This question can't be understood. Now, how did I intend to do that? Did I say that I would do it? By whom would I be understood? It was intended. It's all that could be said. But it must be understood. The understanding is yet more important than the sharpness of the blade. There are those who have lived and died beyond the enigma. St. Lawrence, tucking his own gridiron under his arm. St. Agatha, coiffed like Freya, imperturbable, allowing a peak at her bleeding chest, sometimes her paps held out in a dish. Carl Liebneck, on leave from death. These are not more cases of a grand indifference, but some who just knew that this is only the first world, fretted and sick, and another is, or will be, no matter which, the good, better, best, and the real one. Now, Try all that again, without the ambush. Be less arch. It must be possible to tell a story. A good man cannot be harmed. The wall plaque reads, Arabito qui, nella stata, mil novecento diciotto, il beato Massimiliano Colbe, che nell'area di Auschwitz, il quattordici agosto, 
1941 la sua vita per salvare un padre di famiglia. O, in another version, here in the summer of 1918 lived the blessed Massimiliano Colbe, who in the lager of Auschwitz on the 14th of August 1941 offered his own life to save the father of a family. It must be possible to tell a story. A father Kolbe, 41, a Franciscan, was sent to Auschwitz by the Germans for sheltering Jews in his, in his monastery in a father Kolbe, an anti-Semite, as his writing show, was sent to Auschwitz by the Nazis for sheltering partisans. A father Kolbe, 41, was in Auschwitz when one man escaped and ten were picked die in his stead. A father, Colby, 41, was in the line but not picked out when one of the ten, a father, Father Colby, 41, heard one of the men cry out that he was the father of a family. A father, Colby, 41, hearing one man plead for his life and his children, stepped forward in his place. A father, Colby, who had taken the place but one Franczyk Gowonicze was locked with nine others. Father Kolbe, 41, who had taken the place of a Jewish prisoner, would die of hunger and thirst. St. Max, who is the subject of my healing project, led the prayers and singing and amazed the guards. St. Max, who I am writing about for my project, lived without any food or water for three weeks. One father, Colbe, 41, still alive, ten days later when the cell was needed, was killed by lethal injection. Colbe, the anti-Semitic priest, is said to have taken the place of Francis the Bonnage, who is not a Jew. Father Colbe was loved by all the prisoners, and they reviled the Jew, Gavonnage, who was not a Jew stood back and survived. Father Colbe, still alive when the cell was opened, offered his arm to the doctor for the carbolic acid. Father Colbe was killed by the usual drug employer, phenol, injected by the medical staff straight into the heart. It must be possible to tell the story. Let no man say he is happy until he is dead. When Colbe stepped forward, he defeated life, and he knew he was a happy man. Perhaps in his summer in America in 1918, he stuck his nose into a dish of tomatoes just from the stem and right into the stalks and breathed and smiled and said, This is life. And this is good. And then he turned and went through a door and stopped as though looking for someone and then turned and went out again and somewhere in this small confusion put down the fruit and asked himself, how may the heart be as good as this? It also lives here. No answer. But when he stepped forward, he knew he had learned to let life pass and was a happy man. But to be the father of a family, this is life and this is good and here life cannot pass and this you clearly knew as you stepped out to say, take me or worse that effect or maybe this life is a thing for others. You must be understood. St. Maximilian Colby, martyr for charity, not for faith, and contender for my hero project, was this your stepping stone to your better life, when at the last, having no need of your spectacles, you will climb naked and perfectly toned out of the manhole the good doctor had consigned you to? Or did you not see God at all? Only Francesca who 
was neither a Jew or not a Jew, and who cried, what about my children? And who did or did not do all right after telling his story later. And this was all you saw, Franchisek or Frank, his flesh, his head, the heads of his children, and whether or not you offered up your arm, or let the needle in twixt rib and rib, you are telling me, be perfect as I am. Or, as I made you say, there is no thing cognizable that says, go, do thou likewise. And a good man cannot be harmed. There is only a human voice 